Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about the FJ Cruiser and I'm going to answer the question, what went wrong with them? And the hilarious thing is, nothing went wrong with them. So why aren't they making them? Well, there's all kinds of forces involved in that, but hilariously enough, now they're making a comeback and they're starting to become collector's items. Now this guy got one sweet deal. He just bought this from a place that didn't understand them. It's only got 75,000 miles and he got it for $16,900. Now if you notice, there is not a ding on on this thing it's in immaculate shape it's even got the luggage rack on it check out the interior it's immaculate it's four-wheel drive because it's got the transfer case right here you can put it in whatever system you want including blocking the rear differential doing all track they've got a great six-cylinder toyota engine a totally reliable automatic transmission so why the heck did they stop making them well it was all market forces they call it an suv fj stands for the engine which is an f series engine but j stands for jeep so they made it more like their idea of a modern jeep and toyota themselves didn't actually make it they made it through their subsidiary hino which is a company that makes trucks and buses and stuff. Of course, they use Toyota engines and transmissions and everything in them. But they got killed by market forces. For the price they were asking for what they were, people that wanted that particular configuration at that time. Now, of course, the EPA had something to do with this demise because they're tremendous gas hogs because they are GP vehicles. All GP vehicles get crappy gas mileage. They're high up in the air, so they're not aerodynamic. They have big old tires, which is more friction, but mainly, they weigh a lot. This particular one weighs about 4,500 pounds. So you can't get good gas mileage in this configuration. Most people in town will get 14, 15 miles a gallon on this, and they're lucky if they get 19 on a highway. Now, you could compare that to one of the most popular vehicles they make, the Toyota RAV4. It weighs about a thousand pounds less and it gets much better gas mileage. It gets practically twice the gas mileage on the highway. So. Everybody's worried about that and Toyota just decided, well, we're not going to make them anymore. And with their interesting retro style, they're starting to become uber collector's items. Because everybody knows they can run forever. I had a custom in Houston that had 350,000 miles on it. This thing's got 75,000 miles. It's got a long way to go. Odds are you're not going to find one with 75,000 miles on it, but you never know. Because a lot of guys buy these things and as they look like giant toys, they treat them like giant toys. And they don't drive them all that much. This guy doesn't drive his much either. Because he's got a Toyota Sequoia with 305,000 miles on it that he uses for his everyday driver. This is his toy. He got one heck of a deal. It's the loaded version. It's got everything on it. The four-wheel drive system. And under the hood, Look, it's got class. It's got hydraulics. You don't have that stupid little stick. And it has the variable valve timing V6 engine that Toyota makes that run forever. And since it's an 07, you don't have to mess with no stinking timing belt. It's got a timing chain. Those things can last forever. And it doesn't have one of those crappy plastic canister oil filters either. Instead, it has a very easy to access oil filter on the top. And the cool thing about this is when you change your oil, do it first thing in the morning. And you know what's first thing in the morning? This thing's empty of oil. But when you take it off, does it go bloop bloop all over the place, make a mess in your driveway, get on the engine and stink? No, that's why you want to change these things first thing in the morning. It all drains down. You don't have to worry about making a mess. It's got an ABS system, of course. You know, it's a modern Toyota. Air conditioning that works perfectly fine. And what I like, it's got the old hydraulic power steering. One, they last forever. Two, Toyota has great engineers. So you get a great feel while you're driving. Don't don't like electronic power steering assist. A lot of times it feels unnatural, but man, when those things break, wait till you price what it costs to put a motor and reprogram the car to put it on. It costs a small fortune. So what if you lose half a mile a gallon? You know, they're gas hogs anyways. So who really cares? You're not saving that much on a big truck putting electric power steering in. It just doesn't make any sense. Of course, the reason most people do it is because it's cheaper to do. It's an easier production thing to do and everything can be controlled by computers, which is what they want. So let's go in and see if it starts. Like that's a real shocker. It's a Toyota. Solid door. 
It's purring away. I'm being an old seven. It's old school. It's got CDs and they still work. There's a Toyota engine purring away. You'll always hear that tiny bit of noise. That's just the noise that normal cams make when they're 16, 15 years old. It's not shaking. It's running fine. I like these black wheels with the covers. They're nice looking. And this thing spent its whole life in Rhode Island. I personally though and clean it all off and coat it all over so it doesn't rust anymore because even though these don't have frame rot problems like some of the Tacomas had you still want to make it last I would brush off all the rust I'd recoat the whole thing no shake smooth it's a Toyota George old doesn't have a backup camera cool steering wheel I got it locked to lock does the four-wheel drive system make a sound no this isn't Ford or GM this is a Toyota they're well made and it's high enough you feel king of the world but not too high like if you're gonna topple over and here we go on the Rhode Island torture test to see how the shock system works and it's a tall vehicle it's gonna bounce around a little bit but you feel totally in control my rear end has no problems at all it gets rid of the bumps pretty good it, it feels pretty smooth you're not jarred you're always gonna get somewhat of a bumpy ride when you're driving out big old four-wheel drive jeepy type vehicle but this is about as good as a ride you're gonna get in one and of course these things are perfect for cruising along the seashore and if they let you drive in the sand uh, you'd have even more fun with a four-wheel drive and there it is the real mileage this thing isn't even broken in yet so let's see what this 15 year old fj cruiser can do well just go at a smooth idle it throws you back in your seat a little Shifts like a dream, plenty of power. Just be sure to have plenty of money for gasoline. And it really corners on a dime. No problem with these. Toyota knows how to make suspension for them. They've been making these type of vehicles for ages. This was just one that failed economically but not mechanically. Sure, oh, Toyota made Land Cruisers for a really long time and they started out smallish, even smaller than this and got bigger. But Toyota learns a lot when they manufacture stuff. Their whole thing is perfecting it over time. And I gotta say, the name fits FJ Cruiser. This thing is perfect for cruising along. You feel like you could cruise forever. And when you look around inside, basically, it's like a Honda Element on steroids. And you really got a great view of these giant side view mirrors. They're not toys. I gotta say, Toyota subsidiary Hino Motors, they know how to make trucks. They've been making trucks and buses since like, you know, 1947 or something. <laughs> right after World War II. So if you want something that's fun, fast, that can last forever, but don't care about gas mileage, FJ Cruisers for you. I doubt if they'll ever bring it back with gas mileage restrictions and stuff. Truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought it back as some type of electrified vehicle, whether it be bad battery operated or hydrogen fuel cell cars. People like these things and that was the big thing. They got horrible gas mods. A lot of room, they electrify it. They could probably sell these things like hotcakes. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Kyle Jason 98 says, can a mechanic cheat during a state car inspection? Of course they can. Back in the day when I lived in Houston, there was a guy down the street. All he did was inspect cars and fix them. And he only got an inspection license so he could rip people off on repairs. And I had a customer who came to me and a month before, he had had his car inspected at this place. And he had paid 500 something dollars to tune it up and get it fixed so it would pass the test, right? And the guy's charging for spark plugs, air filters, all this stuff, right? Well, he brought it to me a month later and it was running bad. And I checked it. It still had the original spark plugs, the dirty air filter. The guy just cheated him. And it turns out, he got caught a few months later by the Department of Motor Vehicles. They sent a plain clothes guy there and they saw that before he inspected the car, this was when they were doing the tailpipe emissions and they stick the sensor up the tailpipe. He had a rag that had kerosene on it and he'd wipe it all over the end of the nozzle and then stick it in. And of course then all the hydrocarbons from that would make it fail and he'd tell people, oh I can fix your car today but it's going to be 500 bucks and he was just ripping them off. So of course they can cheat if they really wanted to. Even the other way around, if you got a junky car, they can cheat to make your car pass by putting a different VIN number in and hooking it up to somebody else's car. Now some of those states have wised up like up the road here in Massachusetts when you get in your car inspected, the inspector stations have cameras running making sure that that's the car that's being tested so they knew people were doing that and now they have a safeguard so they can't do that anymore but of course humans are always thinking ways of bypassing stuff we're very intelligent creatures so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell